the Nokia 3310. A mobile device launched in September 2000 by the Finnish multinational communications company which was then leading the scene. The device was an evolution of their earlier phones, in particular the Nokia 5110. It wasn't the first Nokia to lose its aerial, but it did offer the same levels of durability as their 1998 handset, something I found that the 3210 model launched in 99 lacked. This was an era of pay as you talk and yearly phone contracts, so releasing several new models every year was almost obligatory. To that end, the Nokia 3330 was released just a few months after the 3310, and remains a lesser known model. Along with all the 3310 features, the 3330 came as standard in a lighter coloured case, and included a new pinball game called Bumper, and animated screensavers. However, the standout feature was WAP capability allowing internet access. This was the reason I obtained my model in 2001, and it remains one of my favourite handsets to this day. Internet browsing functionality was pretty limited, and other than sneaking the odd pub quiz answer or looking up a taxi number, I didn't use this powerful technology a great deal. But given the recent announcement of a Nokia 3310 relaunch, it seems like a good time to revisit this dependable unit and see what it can do today. So I thought the best way to go about this was if we got the big tamale out of the way first. And then after that we'll have a look at the phone in general. That should save those who are less interested having to skip through the video. Now setting this up took a while. The 3330 uses a very outdated method of internet connection. I'm using an O2 SIM card here, but I actually ended up connecting to Vodafone's WAP portal. The reason for that is because the phone actually dials a number in the same fashion as dial-up back in the 90s. In fact, if you dial the number, you hear the familiar connection tone. Once it's dialed, the Nokia then accesses the data using a circuit switched data connection, allowing a fairly quick access of a whopping 9.6 kilobits per second. Because of this configuration quirk, you can dial an alternative service provider to get access. Now back in the day, using the connection of your tariff provider would yield cheaper access costs, but nowadays that's just not the case, and you pay a standard mobile connection charge. It's times like this when you start to appreciate the wonders of mobile data and Wi-Fi. I was actually surprised Vodafone's dial-up was still active. I imagine it's a rusty old modem sitting in a corner that they've simply forgotten about. For the mobile phone network with unbeaten coverage. So after entering a plethora of settings, connection was established. The next problem was finding a wireless markup language compatible site that the phone's ancient proprietary browser can interact with. Most modern servers will just tell you where to go, but old favourites like wap.google.com still support these old protocols, and this is what we're presented with. Now this might not appear incredibly exciting, but to me, it really was. Just seeing that little globe in the top right of the screen brought back a ton of memories alone. And then, there we have it, google.com presented in all its early WAP glory. Some links don't work. But others, such as image search, surprisingly do. You don't get any images, but you do get a few suggestions and a few other links to click through. In fact, I spent so long clicking about here that my battery died. And come on, this is a phone with a 245 hour standby time. Now I couldn't find many other WML sites worthy of exploration, so I decided to make my own and popped it on NostalgiaNerd.com. Here it is, a welcome page, a page with a picture of me, and of course no Nostalgia Nerd site would be complete without a gratuitous shot of a ZX Spectrum. I've popped the link for that below if you fancy a gander, although some browsers will require a WML plugin to read it. So as you can see, this early attempt at mobile internet was somewhat limited. It was of course monochrome, it wasn't the fastest, but it was functional, it was helpful, and it was definitely a sign of things to come. 
This is what Nokia were good at and it's not the only feature in this phone which I loved at the time. Let's take a quick look around. Other than the colour, the case design is exactly the same as the 3310 and these are sturdy little devices designed to weather the torments of time. In my possession I have a standard coloured model and a light blue orange variant. You can see that the orange model has an introductory screen, whereas this one has a custom intro apparently set up by a lass by the name of Kareen, probably some 15 years ago. Kareen, if you're watching, well done. The 3330 also allowed animated screensavers, enough to provide hours of entertainment in the pub when you'd run out of money for the fruit machines. I can think of nothing more nostalgic than some soothing old ringtones. A bit harsher than I remember. There are some 35 tones built in as standard and this particular handset even has a custom downloadable tone. See if you can recognise the tune. Yes, it's Looney Tunes, although it says Looney Tunes. Not a bad rendition I might add and of course you can compose your own tunes. Once that novelty is worn off, you can just slip it into silent and be done with it. The 3330 really upped the game with its games. We had the classics such as Snake 2, which I still feel wasn't quite up to the first game, but also Space Impact and Bumper Tables, a freaking pinball game. And it's not half bad, I might add, and there's certainly less screen blur than, say, an original Game Boy. SMS was where it was at the early noughties and this phone had it covered. Not only do we have picture messaging but we have a chat feature. Now this offered an early version of the kind of chat bubbles we're used to today, allowing for a more flowing text message conversation. We know where you got your ideas Apple. Additionally this phone could handle messages at a whopping 459 characters in length by threading three separate ones together, smashing that original 160 character limit, the very same limit that Twitter is indeed founded on. I believe this was also the first Nokia to take the phone book away from the SIM card and with the phone memory kindly providing an additional 100 space slot. This allowed storage of a whopping 200 contacts and this was of course well before Facebook friend lists when 200 contacts was deemed excessively ample for all your acquaintances or at least the ones you ever wanted to contact. Depending on your provider you can also receive news, text messages and other information, a method which is still used in many third world countries for primitive internet access. So there we go, that's the Nokia 3310's slightly younger sibling, the 3330 in all its glory. I can certainly see the appeal of a new model entering the market, but the main draw for me is the simplicity of this model. It offers entertainment, customization, limited internet access if you know the right websites, and it just feels liberating compared to our cumbersome technology packed smartphones of today. You won't be able to take pictures or watch tech moan on YouTube, but it might just give you room to breathe, to think, and to get a few games of snake in before the real world comes all flooding back to you. Thank you for watching this episode, feel free to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down or even contribute to my Patreon to keep the channel going. In any case, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great evening.